Right, okay, so we've got this first expression. And what I tend to do whenever I'm starting these, I'm looking, can I do absorption or can I do distribution rule? All right, so the distribution rule, I'm saying, right, is there anything common to any of these expressions? So if I look at this, we've got C and D, an expression involving C and D, and you think, well, the other ones have all got A's and B's. So let's concentrate on the A's and B's. So that's what I'm going to look at. So I'm going to look, I'll pick up a pen that works, hang on. So I'm going to look at the A's and B's. Now, if I look at these two, is there anything common in these two sets of expressions? Yeah, there is B. B is common. Okay, so if I say, right, using distribution, if I pull the, that pen's not very good either, if I pull the B out, I am left with A or not A. Now, looking at your rule set, can that be reduced? Can that be simplified? I've got an A or not A. Yes, Kevin. No, it's actually better than that. It's one. Always going to be true. So if I've got, so if A was one, not A would be not. So you're saying one or not is one. If A was not, not A would be one. So you're saying not or one, so it's going to be one. So actually that reduces to B and one. Okay, so effectively that's an and there. B and one. So if I've got B and one, what can that reduce to? What would be the logic? B. Look at the truth table for and. So if you've got A and B, no, 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 one. Uh, one, no, one, one. Okay. So if we've got a one, so this is the case what we got here. We've got, right, there's a one and a, so when it's a no, the answer's going to be, no, when it's a 1, the answer is going to be 1. So if you've got one side of the expression on an AND is a 1, whatever the other one is, is the thing that controls what the answer is. Which is what we're saying there. We're saying, right, OK, simplify that. It, it's actually just B. Everyone follow that? <coughs> It is going to take your time to start recognising these things. You start recognising, oh, once you get it, they're actually quite easy. You're never going to get anything monstrously complicated in the exam. These are probably harder than what you're ever going to get. Okay. Now, the way I've broken that down is I've just focused on this part of the expression. I haven't touched this at all. So I'm just going to bring that down. So we've simplified this bit into B, which is quite good. Now we've got three separate terms. There isn't anything else that we can simplify on that. Now if you look, this was the answer we got from the Carnot map. Now, once you're used to building algebra, this is quicker than doing the Carnot map way for this expression. Because it is quite, tri quite trivial to draw a Carnot map of that. Once they get bigger, the Carnot maps get a little bit more workaholic. But the, so does the Boolean algebra as well. So it becomes a choice. If in a question you get told to just simplify something, do whatever you feel is easiest for you. Or, or he was saying, will they tell you what to do? Yet yeah, in a lot of cases they will say, use the rules of Boolean algebra to simplify this. Or they'll say, use a Carnot map. Or if they're being cool, they'll call it a okay, map. Okay. Right. So that involves... The main one there was distributive law, to pull out a common factor. So we're looking for common factors. Okay. I then just used some of the bog standard rules, I like the a 1 and a 0, if you're um, it's always going to be 1, and then that one. So they were just the bog standard rules. So there wasn't really actually much work for that. Right, I'll stop that one.